Yo, welcome back to Dave in Biology. So in this video, we'll be going through Form 4, Chapter 5, Metabolism and Enzymes. But we'll only be focusing on enzymes. So in this video, we we'll actually will learn and go through what are the characteristics of enzyme. Number two, why only specific substrate can bind to specific enzymes? we we'll answer that question. And number three, factors affecting enzyme. How different factors can affect enzyme? So first off, enzyme where do we usually hear this term is usually in digestion, right? You need enzyme to digest food, different different kinds of enzymes needed to digest different different kinds of food. So for example, like last time we all learned you have protease that digest protein, you have maltase to digest maltose, you have lipase to digest lipid, which is fats. So without enzyme, digestion process actually takes very long, it takes days to digest your food. But you don't want the food to be in your body for days. Like if you eat it today, the next day you're going to release it out, correct? So therefore, enzymes is the one that speeds up the digestion process. Look at the definition here. They are biological catalysts that speeds up biochemical reaction. Um, digestion is an example of biochemical reaction. And catalyst is a substance that speeds up a reaction. For instance, let's say if I have a hot glass of Milo, let's say boiling hot, 90 degrees or 100 degrees. To drink this is impossible. You have to let it cool down and it's probably going to take like what, 10, 15, 20 minutes for it to cool down. But let's say if I want to drink it now, instantly. So what can I do to shorten this cooling process is by of course adding ice. So if I add ice, your Milo will cool down very fast probably less than a minute, right? So this ice is the so-called catalyst that speeds up my cooling process from 10, 15 minutes now, one minute I can drink already. So that's what enzymes are. Next is the characteristics of enzyme. So for this part, it's actually one of the most common asked question in exam. But before we look at the characteristics, I need you to look at this diagram. So what's happening here is basically the enzyme reaction. So you can see there's something here called a substrate. So substrate is the example of food molecule that the enzyme breaks down. For example, let's say I have a lipid, a fat molecule. So the enzyme that breaks down lipid is called lipase. And then we have something here called an active site. So active site is the part of the enzyme whereby the substrate will bind to and attaches itself to. Take note, a substrate cannot bind to any other part of the enzyme apart from the active site. Now, once the substrate binds to the active site of enzyme, I will then form an enzyme substrate complex. And this is where the enzyme reaction takes place, where the enzyme breaks down the substrate into its products. So the products of lipid are actually called glycerol and fatty acid. So this is by the way what lipid is being digested into. So we also can say glycerol and fatty acid are the products of lipids. So now that we get how this enzyme reaction occurs, now we can look at the characteristics. So question will usually ask this. They will say, based on diagram, explain two characteristics of enzyme. Now when they say explain two characteristics, you need to have two characteristics along with two explanations, hence giving you four marks. And when they say based on diagram, you only can write these two characteristics because by looking at this diagram, we only can see these two characteristics of enzyme. For example, active site of enzyme are highly specific, whereby it says only specific substrate that matches active site of enzyme can bind to it. So what do I see over here is I can see that only this shape substrate matches with this shape active site of enzyme. So therefore, enzymes are very specific. If the substrate shape doesn't match to it, it cannot bind to it. So that's what it means. So I can, you can see it over here. This shape with this shape. Then number two, enzymes are not broken down after enzyme reaction. You can see once the substrate being broken down its products, the enzyme is still there. So therefore, I can reuse it. And since it can be reused multiple times, I only need it in small amount. Just like water tumbler, for example. You need to carry one or buy one water tumbler with you because after today, you finish using it, you can wash it again, refill water, and use it again tomorrow. That's why you only need to buy one because you can reuse it many, many days. Understand? So that are the two characteristics of enzyme. And next, this question over here says, explain why the enzyme is able to act on the blue substrate 
but not the green substrate. So this question actually is related to the characteristics of the enzyme that we mentioned just now. Enzymes are highly specific. So obviously you can see the blue one, the same example that we have just now, matches exactly with the active site. But this green one very obviously has a completely different shape that does not, that cannot bind into it. So question will often ask you to explain this, why I can act on this and not this. So for the blue one, just like the characteristics we explained just now, we can say, because the blue substrate is the specific substrate that can bind to the active site. So just like we mentioned just now, if you can bind to the active site, you can form this enzyme substrate complex. And once you have an enzyme substrate complex, the enzyme can start to break down the substrate, allowing my enzyme reaction to take place. However, it's a completely different story for the green one. Since the shape is completely different, we will say this is not the specific substrate, so it cannot bind to the active site of enzyme. If I cannot bind, I cannot be together, I cannot form an enzyme substrate complex. And when I cannot form, definitely there will be no reaction. And that's why, for example, we always say one enzyme only breaks down one kind of food. For example, lipase can only break down lipid, but lipase cannot break down maltose, sucrose, and other, any, any other kind of food is because the shape probably is completely different like this one over here. Very easy. And finally, the factors affecting enzyme reaction. Now, this part actually is the most important one. So, total, we have four factors that affect enzyme pH value, temperature, substrate, and enzyme concentration. However, this video will focus more on substrate and enzyme concentration. Uh, the first two, I only will briefly go through a bit. Lah. So, for pH, we will say uh, different enzymes work best at different pH value. Some acid, some neutral, some alkaline. So, we actually will say different enzymes have different optimum pH. Optimum means the most suitable, the best pH value. Like I said, some acid, some neutral, some alkaline. Now, for temperature, 37 degrees is the optimum temperature. It's the most suitable temperature for enzyme to carry out their reaction because 37 degrees is your body temperature. And finally, it's upstream and enzyme concentration. So for substrate concentration, as I have more substrate, I have more enzyme reaction. Because look at here, as I have more substrate, right, I will have more of it binding to the active site of enzyme. See, if I have one substrate, one will bind to the active site. If I have two, two will bind. If I have three, three will bind. So as more substrate bind to active site, of course, I will form more enzyme substrate complex. And as we mentioned just now, when there's sub enzyme substrate complex, then only you have enzyme reaction. So if I have one enzyme substrate complex, one reaction, two, then two reaction, three, then three reaction. Also, it's increasing. Understand? And then enzyme concentration, very similar concept. As the enzyme concentration increase, the enzyme reaction also increase. However, here I will explain slightly differently. Instead of saying more substrate bind to active site, I will say more active site available because I'm putting in more enzyme. Therefore, I'm putting more active site for the substrate to bind. So you can see if you have one enzyme, means got one active site. Two enzyme means two active site. Three enzyme means three active site. So more active site means same thing, more enzyme substrate complex are formed. Therefore, reaction also increases oh, the same thing. However, when the substrate concentration and enzyme concentration reaches saturation point, so saturation point meaning the maximum amount of enzyme substrate complex that can be formed, the reaction will remain constant. Meaning if you look at this graph, so going back to substrate concentration, now you can see here, actually at the beginning, right, I only have three enzymes, let's say. So if I have one substrate, I have one enzyme substrate complex. If I have two substrate, two enzyme substrate complex, I'm increasing. Three substrate, three enzyme substrate complex. However, when I increase my substrate concentration to four, five, six, you can see there's no more enzyme left for the substrate to bind. So the reaction will still remain at three. So three is the maximum amount of enzyme and substrate I can form. That's the maximum amount. Understand? So, 
how do we explain that? As the substrate concentration increases beyond the saturation point, the enzyme reaction remains constant because all active sites are filled with substrate. You can see all the active sites already have substrate. It's like telling you now all the girls over here have boyfriend already. So if got more boys come, also cannot form additional couple. So therefore we will say enzyme concentration becomes limiting factor. Means now, because of the enzyme not enough, my reaction cannot increase. So the enzyme is limiting my enzyme reaction. So if I want to increase my enzyme reaction, I need to increase now enzyme concentration. Only got used. So you can see now no matter how many substrate I put in, the reaction still remains the same. And for enzyme concentration, it's the same thing. You can see here now, I only have three substrates. So if I add anything more than three, you can see my fourth enzyme, fifth enzyme, sixth enzyme got no substrate to, for, to bind to. So my saturation point is the same three. So now it's a bit tabalic. Now instead of having not enough uh, girls, now I got not enough boys. So I got three boys, when three girls come, I got three couple. But if the fourth, fifth and sixth girl come, they got no more boyfriend to form already. So I still have three maximum. So this is how we explain. Here the same thing, as the enzyme concentration increases, the enzyme reaction remains constant. Of course, it's after saturation point I'm talking about. So now we, can, we have to say all substrates are occupied with enzyme. You cannot say all active sites are filled with substrate because you can see not all active sites are filled. So you must the say, now you must say all substrate occupied with enzyme. So now we will say, sorry, there's a mistake. Substrate concentration becomes the limiting factor. Means now because I not enough substrate is limiting the reaction. If I want to increase my enzyme reaction, I increase enzyme also no use already. I'm going to increase substrate concentration. Okay, so this is something you need to take note on. If they ask here and ask here, the reaction is different. Here is increasing, but here I will become constant anymore because got not enough enzyme for this case. Here got not enough substrate. So I'll give you an example question. How question will ask is exactly the same graph that I showed you just now. Look at this graph here. So they give the same graph. Now we are happy having uh, substrate concentration as our factor. So they ask you to explain the rate of enzyme reaction from P to R. So here is whereby my enzyme reaction is increasing. As, my substrate, as I increase my substrate concentration, right? So explain the rate. So I thought about the rate first. So I can say S substrate concentration increases the rate of enzyme reaction increases. Then you got to explain because if I put in more substrate, it means more of them bind to the active site. Same as what we did just now. So more substrate binds to active sites of enzyme. So I can say, hence, when more boy and girl hold hands, more couple, so now I have more enzyme substrate complex form. And that's why my reaction increased more enzyme dash substrate complex are formed. Got it? Now, the next question now is R to S. So here is basically you can see the reaction remain constant. So here is of course now I exceed the saturation point, I exceed the maximum point. So now they ask me to explain the rate of enzyme reaction. So here I can say also, I still continue to increase my substrate, right? Four, five, six, like just now. So I say as substrate concentration increases, of course, obviously now my enzyme reaction does not increase. So I will say the rate of enzyme reaction remains constant. And number two, why they remain constant? Because now remember, 
all the girls have boyfriend already. Ah, because all active sites of enzymes, like we said just now, are filled with substrates. All the girls have boyfriend already. So therefore, now you're going to say, who's the limiting factor? Who is stopping my reaction? I Now I got a lot of substrate, not enough enzyme. So you could increase the enzyme, right? So we say, hence the enzyme concentration becomes the limiting factor. Limiting. And that's it for enzymes. What we went through are basically all the important things you need to know from enzymes. I really hope this video actually helped you guys a lot. If you have any questions, as always, you can comment in the comment section below. You also can DM me in my Instagram, David Biology. And I'll